Another month and another Home Assistant update has landed. This month, of course, it is the September release of 2024.9, which adds new options for using LLMs, improvements to energy tracking, several new integrations, and some much anticipated dashboard features. As we know, earlier this year, the Home Assistant team introduced the new sections view for dashboards, which adds a much cleaner, easier and flexible dashboard based on a grid system. And since then, we've had multiple updates to add new features like resizable cards and also badges. But there was one update that many people, myself included, were looking forward to, and that was the ability to resize the actual sections themselves, which were typically fixed in size until now. 2024.9 allows you to resize the sections to better suit your needs and if you change into the edit mode in the dashboard and then edit a section, you can now change how wide a section is up to your maximum defined columns. So for example, if you have the overall dashboard set to a max of four columns, you can now resize a single section up to four columns wide, allowing you to create a giant section at the top of your dashboard, followed by four smaller ones, for example, or whatever you want really. This is a great new addition. Another new addition that goes along with the resizable sections is called full width cards. So now if you edit a card and head over to the layout tab for that card, there is now a toggle for full width, which will of course obviously make the card full width. This option differs from just setting the size of the card manually to fill the section because it will auto expand and contract even as you resize the section, whereas the manual layout options will not do that. Again, a really nice little addition here. Next, the energy dashboard gets a really neat improvement where it can now calculate and display your untracked energy consumption. So let's say you have a smart meter integration that's tracking the total amount of energy consumption that your house uses, and then you have some CT clamps measuring a couple of your circuits, but not all of them. Well, Home Assistant can now show you the untracked energy usage, which is going to be your total consumption minus those tracked consumption devices, which will then obviously give you an untracked value. You can, of course, toggle this on or off in the graph along with other devices if you don't want to see this new feature, but I can see this being really useful for tracking down high energy devices. Next up, the use of LLMs or AI in Home Assistant has been getting some updates recently. Starting out with the Google and OpenAI's offering being integrated into Home Assistant, which allows you to control devices inside of HA with these LLMs. And then of course, we got an update that allowed Olama, which is a local LLM offering that again, you can use to control devices in your house with. This release, however, expands on that list once again by adding Anthropic to the available list, which you may know for their Claude models, which have been great alternative to OpenAI's offerings. This is a cloud LLM integration once again, so you will want to use Olama if you're looking for a local option only, but as always, it's good to have more options. Finally, for the big stuff, a small thing for some of you, but I think it is a really cool thing, so I did want to mention it, but this release marks a milestone in open source compliance for Home Assistant, meaning that the team has made sure that every library that is used by its 2,800 plus integrations and ensured that every library has an open source initiative approved license. And as you can imagine, for the sheer number of integrations Home Assistant has, that process doesn't happen overnight. And this isn't something that has all the glitz and glams of some big new feature, but I thought it was really cool. And so I wanted to bring it up. Nice. As for the little things this month, firstly, you can now install and start the MQTT add-on from the integrations menu whenever you go to add MQTT for the first time. The KNX UI that was added in last month's release now has the ability to create switches and light entities. The Air Gradient integration now supports updates. And finally, the Nest integration now supports event entities for things like doorbell presses. In terms of new integrations, we see five new integrations added in this release, including the aforementioned Anthropic integration, 
and also an integration called Nice Go, which lets you integrate with garage door and also gate openers, which is pretty cool. And as for integrations that you can now set up in the UI instead of YAML, there is just one this month, and it's that you can now add a number template helper directly from the front end. As for breaking changes or backwards incompatibility changes, it is a small to medium sized list this month. A lot of them are just the removal of previously deprecated stuff, so just cleaning up and hopefully nothing that's going to be an issue for you. But do make sure to have a read for yourself, as always, to make sure nothing applies to you. And that's about it for this month. A nice small update this month while the devs have some well-earned holiday time, but still some great stuff nonetheless, and so happy to see continued improvements to the new sections view on the dashboard side. And definitely a feature I was waiting for and I think will open up some great dashboard opportunities, which I'm really looking forward to seeing and testing for myself. Anyways, that's about it for me. Drop this video a like and a comment if you find it useful and you feel like helping the almighty algorithms. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.